Hey guys, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to talk about linear formulas or formulas for lines. And the reason that I decided to record this video is because over the years, I've been asked by students questions about why we have so many formulas for lines and when each formula is appropriate and things like that. So let me start by saying that yes, it is best if you know all of these formulas because that will put you in a position to be able to handle pretty much any problem that can come up involving lines. And do you need all of these formulas to be memorized? Well, yes and no. Um, you could actually not memorize the point-slope formula, but there is a benefit to knowing it. But really, the point-slope formula is just another version of the slope formula. So I will show you how those two are connected if you wanted to only just have this formula memorized, which many students already do have this formula memorized, and that one tends to sit, stick, the slope formula tends to stick more than the point-slope formula does, and that's fine because you can just use the slope formula. Um, but the other two formulas on here are actually forms, not so much formulas, um, and so what those are really important for is knowing how to write down a linear equation or when a linear equation is given to you to recognize certain features of the line by just how it's written. But more importantly, as a student, you want to be able to demonstrate that you know the difference between the different forms. So it is important to know all of these, but I think that by the end of this video, if you're not comfortable with all of these formulas yet, you may feel a lot better about them. So let's go on and start to get familiar. So first, to get you in the right mindset, I would like you to pause the video and draw a line on a XY plane. You can just draw it out on paper. Draw any line that you want and see if you can draw the same line that I'm going to draw. Just pause and then start the video up again. All right, so before I show you the line that I drew, I want you to think about the process that you were going through, the thought process that you were involved in when you were deciding how to draw your line. You were actually involving yourself with how a line is defined. How is a line defined? Well, let's use an online graphing calculator to help us explore this concept. This is GeoGebra, which is free, and it's great for exploring concepts, although for my class, you cannot use a graphing calculator on tests, so you want to be able to do things without a graphing calculator, but it is also really helpful to play around with these um, as you're trying to understand what you're working with. So we're going to use the line tool here, and as you can see, it says to select two points or positions, which perfectly explains what you need in order to define a line. All right, so I could pick any point on um, my, my XY plane, and once I've done that, now I have kind of stuck my line in place, but my line is not well defined because there are so many different options for where to place my second point. And also notice that as I'm looking for where to stick my second point, the steepness of my line is changing. So actually, when you are choosing a second point, you are also defining or deciding what the steepness of your line is. And your line can be uphill from left to right with a positive slope, a positive steepness, which is called slope. Or it could be downhill from left to right. It could be horizontal with no slope, where you could just walk straight across, or it could be vertical with undefined slope. A lot of different options, so literally infinitely many possibilities until you have at least two points or even just one point and a steepness. So let's see my line now. Here's the line that I drew, and the chances that you drew the exact same line are extremely small. In fact, pretty much almost impossible since there are infinite possibilities. But my line goes through the points negative 3 comma negative 1, 0 comma 1, 3 comma 3, and many, many other points. In fact, an infinite number of other points. But I have labeled these three so that we can explore the concept of slope. So Here's your next exercise. Pause the video and 
describe to me on paper, write out the words, how would you get from this point 0 comma 1 to any other point on the line? Just pause, think about that, write it out, and then start the video again. Okay, good. So if you were thinking about it, you might have been thinking, all right, if we want to go from this point 0 comma 1 to this point 3 comma 3, for instance, we could move up two units and to the right three units. That's one way to get from um, the point 0 comma 1 to another point on the line. What if you wanted to go from the point 0 comma 1 to this point here, negative 3 comma negative 1? Well, in that case, then you would move down two units and to the left three units. So that's interesting. Moving the same number of units but opposite directions got me to another point on the line. And still another point, what if I wanted to move um, to this point over here on the line? Then I could move down four units and to the left six units. So now I've moved um, two units but tw two times, in other words four, right, down four, and to the left um, three units but twice, in other words, six times, so four divided by six, um, or four over six, rise over run, right? So um, that's interesting, right? So you can move um, increments of a certain rise and run, you can move um, positive positive or negative negative um, to get to another place on the line. So now that we've thought about it in those ways, let's see about the actual formula. So now we're going to use the slope formula, which many of you know as rise over run or the change in the y's, right, the difference in the y values, subtract the y values, divided by the um, difference in x values, subtracting the x values. Now you'll notice that in this formula, you have some subscripts, little tiny numbers down at the bottom corner of your variables x's and y's because when you use this formula typically you have two different points that in general we can think of as x sub 1 and y sub 1 so those are paired together and then x sub 2 and y sub 2 so subscripts give you a specific um, set of coordinates, but also keeps it so that you can generalize it from any problem to another. Here this says let um, 3 comma negative 3 comma negative 1 be the first point. Okay, so they'll make x1 and y1 right here. And let 0 comma 1 be the second point. So this will be x2, y2. And we're just going to plug those into the formula and see what we get. So when we start with the um, second point, y2 and x2, we get 1 over 0. And then we're going to subtract negative 1 for the y value on top and negative 3 for the x value on the bottom. And then the double negatives here are going to change to positives. So I have 1 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 3, which simplifies to 2 thirds. So we see a rise of 2 over a run of 3, and it's positive. Upward from left to right, positive slope. So that looks good. Let's try it again, just labeling our points a little differently. So this time, we're going to let our first point be 0 comma 1. So this time we have x1 and y1 here for point 0 comma 1 and then our um, second point is going to be here x2 and y2 and so using the same formula but just with our points in a different order we have um, y2 is now negative 1 and x2 is negative 3. So now I'm going to move on to my second or my first point. Um, the y value is 1 and the x value is 0. And now let's simplify that. So now we have negative 2 divided by negative 3, which simplifies since a negative divided by a negative is a positive. We have 2 thirds again. Okay, good. So that worked. So this is why it doesn't really matter how you label your points or the order that you label them, but just that you make sure that the um, coordinate pairs are across the table from each other and you're good to go. In fact, this is the reason that even though most textbooks will give the slope formula at y2 minus y1 
um, over x2 minus x1, typically I like to memorize it as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 because the labeling isn't the important thing. It's just keeping the labeled pairs, um, you know, organized across the table that matters. And for me, for some reason in my brain, it's easier y1 minus y2. Um, but, you know, however you memorize it best, that's fine. All right, let's go on to trying it just one more time. This time I'm going to use the point um, 3 comma 3 as my first point, x1, y1. And then my second point is going to be this one over here, negative 3 comma negative 1. All right, so now using the formula again, I'm just going to plug in my first set of point coordinates is negative 1 and negative 3, and then th I forgot my color coding, and then 3 and 3, and we'll go ahead and simplify that to be negative 4 over negative 6, and then a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we can just get rid of the negatives now. And also, since um, 2 goes evenly into 4 twice and evenly into 6 3 times, it does reduce to 2 thirds. So the next question I'd like you to think about is, what if we would like to be able to name all of the points on a line? How could we do that? Um, well, that should lead you to the next question, which is how many points are there on any line? Can you just write out a bunch of ordered pairs and eventually have written down all of the points on any line? Well, the answer to that is you cannot. You cannot just list out ordered pairs because there are infinitely many points on any line, um, since the line does extend in both directions on towards infinity. So what can you do? Well, you could come up with a formula or an equation. You could use a formula to come up with an equation that would describe all of the ordered pairs um, as a relationship between the horizontal position and the vertical position, right? So there are infinitely many points on any line. So the only way to name all of the points is to write down a starting point and directions of how to get from any point to another point. So look at this graph, okay? It's that same line again. And now I want you to answer the question, what is the value of y? Pause the video and see if you can come up with an answer. Okay, now your answer should have been, it depends, because we can't answer this question without talking about x. You can say things like, um, if x is negative 3, then y is negative 1, right? Because that would be this point right here. Um, you could also say, that if x is 0, then y is positive 1, right? Because that would be this point right here. Or you could say that if x is 3, then y is 3, right? Having another point here. So you can always talk about the value of y, but not until you have an x value um, or vice versa. So when we give the value of y, depending on the value of x, then we say that y depends on x, or you could say that y is the dependent variable. So the relationship between x and y is what we are describing, describing when we write down a linear equation. So for each li line, y will depend on x in a predictable way, and how it does is what will make one line different from another line. Another way that you could say this is that the behavior of y as it's responding to the value of x will distinguish it from any other line. Or another way to put it is to say that the relationship of y to x will well define the line, right? So it's all about the relationship. So here's another example. I've listed out three points that all lie on the same line. The coordinates of the points are 1 comma 5, 2 comma 7, and 3 comma 9. How can we describe the way that y relates to x in all three points? 
pause the video, think about it, and then start it up again. So here's what you should have come up with. Y is always equal to 2 times the X value plus 3. If you try that with any of these pairs, you'll see that it works, right? So if we start with this coordinate, um, the coordinates 1, 5, then put in 1 for X in this equation, and you'll see that if you just simplify this, you'll get 5 for Y, right? y equals 5. When x is 2, then what is y? Well, when x is 2, y is equal to 2 times that x value plus 3, so that gives us 4 plus 3, which is 7. And here, we'll try it with this one also, 3 comma 9. When x is equal to 3, what is y equal to? Using this relationship, 2 times 3 plus 3, gives us 6 plus 3, which is 9, right? So the relationship is very consistent between th these three points, and if you graph these three points, they all lie on the same line. And we have been able to describe each of those points using this, this uh, equation. Notice that when x is 0, y is 3. And why is this important? Because if x is 0, that means you have not moved away from the y-axis. So on your xy plane, x is 0 everywhere on the y-axis. This is everywhere that x is equal to 0, right? So when x is 0, we figure out where the line is going to cross the y-axis. That always gives us a y-intercept. Let's return to example one. What is the equation of this line? All right, so this is my same line that we started out with the, in the beginning with the points negative 3 comma negative 1, 0 comma 1, and 3 comma 3. We figured out that the slope was 2 thirds, um, but we didn't write out the actual equation of the line, which would describe any set of coordinates, the y in terms of x. And we can do that now because we figured out that when x is 0, you get the y-intercept, right? So here is where x is 0 and where y is 1. So that's called the y-intercept. And if we start at the y-intercept and then we move up um, 2 into the right 3, we get to another point. Or if we move any um, ratio, we'll get to any other point. So what we can do is say that y is equal to starting at 1, and then depending on what the x is, we're going to um, multiply that x value by 2 thirds, and that will get us to another point, right? So this is actually the slope-intercept form of a line. And this form is nice because it identifies the y-intercept and the slope, right, mx plus b, the slope and the y-intercept, right? So um, that's what a lot of students remember from any algebra class they may have had is the slope-intercept form, but that's not always available, or I shouldn't say it's not always available, it's not always the y-intercept is not always available. So you don't always know where the line is crossing the y-axis, or you don't always know what the y-value is when x is 0. So there's other ways. Luckily, you can define the equation of any line as long as you know at least two of the, th the three following things. So you always need one point on the line. Um, but the second piece of information is either a second point or having a slope instead are interchangeable equivalent pieces of information that will, each of those will get you to um, know the relationship between x and y that you need in order to write it out as an equation. Alright, so notice that you only need either two points, any two points, not necessarily the one that goes through the y-axis, although that is a very convenient one to use, um, but you can also just use any two other general points. and you could maybe only have one point, but as long as you also know the slope, then you can still work with that. 
So let's try um, another exercise to try to drive this home using the slope formula and only the slope formula, which we plug in the information that you have given up here. So we have the slope, so we can plug in the slope of negative three, right where the M is. And we also have a point, right? So we had the slope here, and then we had the point given, the point coordinates two comma one. Um, so I plugged those into the formula. Now, I'm going to just get rid of the subscripts on my X and Y because when you have a linear equation, you always leave X and Y general and we don't want to represent specific values. We want to say that every X value and every Y value will be related to each other in this way. Now, uh, I'm just going to multiply both sides by this quantity down here, both sides. Right? And that simplifies to this version of the equation. Then I'm going to distribute negative 3 times x and negative 3 times negative 2 to get positive 6. And then I'm going to solve for y. So I'm just going to add 1 to both sides. And then I come up with this equation and just turn it around so it looks more like what we're comfortable seeing. y equals negative 3x plus 7. So now the line, the equation of the line is given in slope intercept form here. There's the slope and 7 is the y intercept. In other words, this line will go through the um, y axis at 0, comma 7. All right, so we used the slope formula. When we had information that was a point and a slope, right? Now, Although you can do it from the slope formula, there is an actual version of the slope formula that is made for the situation where you have a point, a general point, that is not necessarily a y-intercept, and the slope. So by taking that slope formula and just removing the subscripts on x2 and y2, assuming you just have one point available, um, this is the version of the formula that is called point slope, right? So um, you don't necessarily need to memorize it. As I've just demonstrated, we were able to just use the slope formula and input the information that we had and remove the subscripts. But this one is actually made for that exact situation. All right, now, um, when you have um, solved for y and simplified, then you will have the slope intercept form, right? So the point slope formula is just another version of the slope intercept form before it is simplified. So usually in problems where you're given a point and a slope and asked to find the equation of the line, you will also be asked to give the answer in a final form, either slope intercept form or standard form. So slope intercept form is very easy because you always just solve for y. So I'm just going to show you how if you um, distribute the slope, you get mx minus m times x1. And then if you add y1 to both sides and then pull all your regular numbers together, that, that these would all be regular numbers. Um, once you plug in certain information and simplify by combining them into another regular number, then you will have your y-intercept from all of that. And then you have it in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And standard form is the last thing you need to know. Standard form is just where all your x and y terms are on the left side and only one regular number is on the right and also the lead number should not be negative. Now, I will say that I have seen in some exercises and in some textbooks, um, a negative lead coefficient is accepted, but the most um, formal proper standard form would have a positive on the lead coefficient on x. Um, but the, the easy thing to remember is just that you don't have any decimals or integers or fractions in your standard form.
So for example, here is the equation of a line given in slope intercept form, but we've been asked to write it in standard form. So how can we go from slope intercept to standard? What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the fractions first because a, b, and c are integers, not fractions. So we're just going to multiply everything by 3. So by multiplying everything by 3, we keep all the terms equivalent or the entire equation stays equivalent and we've gotten rid of the 3 in the denominator in the original version. So now it's 3 times y, 2 times x, and then the 2 on the end became a 6 when we multiplied it by 3. So now that we've got rid of all of our fractions, we just want to bring all the x and y terms together on one side of the equation. So we'll subtract 2x from both sides to get negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. And then finally, we want the lead um, or the coefficient on x to be positive. So we can just multiply everything by a negative 1, and that will change the signs. And now we have our standard form 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. And so now the equation that was originally given up here in slope-intercept form has now been converted to standard form. So both of these equations are this going to give you the same line, but this is what's known as slope-intercept because you can see the slope of two-thirds and the y-intercept of two very easily when it's in this form, and this is standard form down here. Another thing that I can quickly tell you about standard form is that standard form is kind of useful sometimes, and it's because when you are given a line, say you are uh, told to graph this line, or perhaps find the intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. When it's in standard form, sometimes it's quite easy to identify intercepts because if you were just to plug in 0 for x here, that would cancel out this whole term, and then um, you would have a coordinate with an x, 0 for x, and then if you divide both sides by negative 3, you would have y equals um, negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. So then you would know your y-intercept. And so notice that what we actually did there was we had c, the c over here, divided by the b here. So c divided by b gives you your y-intercept. And we can also find the x-intercept quite simply by plugging in 0 for y here, okay, because then that'll cancel out that whole term, and then you'll just have 2x equals negative 6, and then to find x, you would have negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. So that gives us the y-intercept of, well, when y, I meant to say the x-intercept of when y is 0, the x will be negative 3. And the shortcut to finding that would be to divide the c by a, because this is your a here, and this is your c. So c divided by a gave us the negative 3. And um, the slope is always easy to identify because you can do negative a divided by b. So again, um, when it's in standard form, we think of the x coefficient as a and the uh, y coefficient as b. And if you just do a negative and then divide the a, which is 2, divided by the b, which in this case is negative 3, then we have a negative 2 divided by a negative 3, which gives us 2 thirds, which is the slope we had up here. So those are interesting relationships that sometimes students like to memorize, but you don't really necessarily have to memorize those. It's just kind of convenient if you happen to know them sometimes. But I always find that it's very easy to just plug in 0 for your x and then 0 for your y to find the intercepts, and then that makes it really easy to graph the line. So um, now I've given you all the information about linear formulas that I thought would be helpful to you in connecting the concepts, understanding how all those formulas are related and used. 
and um, hopefully you will find that when you're doing the exercises of applying these formulas now, they will make more sense to you. So I hope you enjoyed and you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next video.